one's executive functioning. Um, there's also a video that I've attached with that, which is quite a funny video. Um, executive functioning is being able to think about what you're doing, the thinking behind the doing. A lot of the time, you're going to have students that just struggle to think about what they are doing. There will be occasions where a student might just hit another student because they weren't even thinking about what that would do. They just weren't thinking. Um, when we use strategies, we need to make sure we are not throwing additional stimulus at these students where it's like, okay, now I need to do this as well. So that's the difficulty with um, uh, self-reflection sometimes is that you're throwing too, you might be throwing too much at them. Um, for some students, uh, we do a self-reflection at the end of the day at my school, but for some students, that's quite overwhelming because they don't have the executive function to think through how they went during the day. Um, so you need to be aware when um, a student is dysregulated. If we impose a strategy and students have not brought into it, are not bought into it, or they don't believe they need it, it will not work. So that's a bit of a background of executive functioning. Um, <clears throat> which is quite important. So when it comes to executive functions that come in the classroom, that's things like self-talk, um, internal speech used to guide behaviours. So in students with post-traumatic stress, they will develop quite negative self-talk, where you might hear students saying, I'm an idiot, I'm dumb, I'm useless, and that's not going to help regulate their emotions. Um, there are other students that really struggle with internal speech. They can't think things through in their head. They have to verbalise everything. So there are some students where um, you have to sit down with them and you, you have to get them to speak to you and talk to you and um, they have to think things through. They have to think aloud. Other students might have difficulties with impulse control. The students that just can't help touching each other or pushing each other. Um, they might think, oh, it would be funny if I push my friend. Or um, they might be doing a game like um, One, Two, Three Ninja where they have to try to tag each other. And in that, they might run at a friend because they don't have impulse control and wreck the game. And that's just because they're not able to control their impulsive. They're impulsive. So in adults, um, you can see impulse control with people that um, might impulse buy when they're in a supermarket and they just buy something that they see. Um, and this is something that um, young children um, may have difficulties with. Another executive function is the ability to be flexible and consider multiple options. Some students with autism will really struggle if you change the schedule of the day um, or if you change the way you do something. Some students really struggle with being able to be flexible. And then the last executive function is working memory. So some students, as they grow older, are going to struggle to reflect on past experiences and code new information. So that's why you see some students with autism making a social faux pas, where they might just come into a conversation and, um, and just change the conversation completely, and then everyone gets annoyed at them. But because they have low working memory, they wind up doing the same thing over and over and over again because they, they forget, oh, that's right, people get annoyed when I do that. Or people get annoyed when I vocalise. I forgot that people realised that. So zones of regulation is really about teaching all of these different executive functions to children through different strategies. Um, so this is another video of when executive function fails. I'll also post that on the Moodle. Um, <clears throat> so when it, one of the strategies that you have in zones of regulation is this idea of stop and read the room. So with stop, the first thing you do is space, which is without perioception, where you think about where am I in the room? What's going on? What's happening around me? 
because students that have a low sense of perioception, they won't notice that people are angry around them. They won't notice that people around them are frustrated. They won't be able to read those emotions around them. They won't notice that people are trying to move away from them. When they get in their personal space, a student with low perioception will get in someone's personal space and won't even notice that that person steps back away from them. Then the second one is time, time of day, part of schedule, routine, what is next? So thinking about what are you supposed to be doing? What is the next thing that you're supposed to do? So that's helping them develop that executive function. Then objects, how are things organised? And people, looking at their face, body and appearance. So the thing with objects is often like, what are we trying to do right now? Um, when we are trying to have quiet time reading and everyone's got their books out and they're reading quietly, is that the time to run into the classroom and jump up and down? So think about the objects in the room, how things are organised and how your behaviour doesn't fit with the rest of the objects in the room and how things are organised. So that's helping to teach those students that executive functioning. <clears throat> One of the things that we also do when we're teaching students executive functioning is a thing called theory of mind. So theory of mind is the ability to understand that other thoughts, that other people's thoughts, feelings and experiences are different from yours. So when you have students that are really young um, and they have a theory of mind, one of the things that they might not understand is that um, they might not have a theory of mind about who their parents are yet. So when they develop an understanding of mum and dad, um, they might have not have a theory of mind to understand that other children have other mums and dads. And some children, especially with autism, when they're really young, say one or two years old, might actually assume that their mum and dad is everyone's mum and dad because they've only got the theory of mind that there is one mum and there is one dad. And they might not realise that other people also have mums and dads. Um, when you get to kindergarten, students might not have the theory of mind with students with autism might not have the theory of mind to realise that everyone lives in a house. They know that they live in a house, but they might not realise that the teacher lives in a house. So when they come to school, they might assume that the, that the teacher lives at the school because they've never seen them in a house. <laughs> so that's kind of explaining theory of mind. And of course, most children... Um, of those basic things understand that as they get older, but as students particularly with intellectual disabilities and global delays, they might have um, a chronological age where, not a chronological age, a developmental age, where they still don't quite understand um, certain things in theory of mind. So, for example, um, we had a student with um, a learning disability um, who had global delays and um, had a moderate intellectual disability and we go to the hall for assembly. Now when we went into lockdown <coughs> um, and we were on Zoom and we had assembly on Zoom, the student said while she was at home in her living room, why aren't we in the assembly? Now, this is after being online for classes for two weeks. And this child had not developed a theory of mind to understand what a lockdown was and had not developed a theory of mind to understand um, that we had to do things over um, Zoom because of COVID. And that had to be really explained to her. So we had to create... A social story to explain what COVID was and what a lockdown was. So because of that we need to teach students how the social world works rather than simply learn social skills and rules. Um, Michelle Garcia Winner explores the concept of thinking about others in the shared environment to help guide interactions. 
So we need to focus on regulation based on other people's expectations to help teach students how to understand a theory of mind um, and how to get that, how to develop their theory of mind. Um, this is also related to Ross Green when we talk about the CPS model. So if you go to Lives in the Balance, that's a really good website to learn about theory of mind. Um, and in that, that's that same thing of lagging skills where they might not have a theory of mind to understand what they're doing. Um, and because of that, students with disabilities who have emotional and behavioural disabilities, one of the problems is that they may not learn from their mistakes. And that's why things like detentions do not work. Things like punishment does not work. Um, simply putting a child on detention because they've hit another student does not work because the student doesn't have, might not have the theory of mind, they might not have the executive function, but essentially um, some students will not learn from their mistakes because they need to actually be taught how to behave and they need to be taught um, how to read social situations and they need to be taught how to read facial expressions. Um, so we need to teach the behaviour norms of our space, okay? Um, so that's what Zo 